Howard Hughes was the richest person in the world from 1960 until his death in 1976. During his childhood, his father took him on a ride on a Curtis seaplane, from where Hughes got the interest in planes and aviation that continued till his death. He survived four airplane accidents during his lifetime, but in 1976 at the age of 70, he died while flying from Acapulco to Houston. He was famous for his reclusiveness. Who knows if his death was due to suicide or genuine crash? He had a fortune of over $2.5 billion, which is equal to $11 billion today. He has no heirs, but still over 400 people claim to get some share of his wealth. In the end, the court decided that the paternal heirs of Hughes's vast wealth were three granddaughters of Hughes' uncle, Rupert Hughes, and two of the uncle's stepchildren. There was a movie called Catch Me If You Can, which starred Leonardo DiCaprio and was based on real-life character Frank Abagnale. Though the character looked fictional, but interestingly, Frank Abagnale was a real man who left home at an early age and impersonated a pilot. He even flew planes and had no training. He also impersonated a doctor, did surgeries, etc. He even passed the Louisiana State Bar exam and became an attorney. Though Frank Abagnale impersonated many careers, but our guy Howard Hughes was no imposter. At the age of 18, he was already running a big company which inherited from his father, he used the proceeds from the company to finance and produce movies. Among such movies, he produced and directed the most expensive movie of the time known as Hell's Angels. He spent around $3.5 million in 1926, which he was never able to recover from the ticket sales. He rented over 200 planes for the movie and learned to fly the planes. In 1935, he became the fastest pilot and made airspeed record of 352 miles per hour. Besides flying planes, he also engineered and designed several planes, including H-4 Hercules. In his early 20s, Howard Hughes once said, My first objective is to become the world's number one golfer. Second, the top aviator. And third, I want to become the world's most famous motion picture producer. Then, I want you to make me the richest man in the world. Want to know how Howard Hughes has done that all? Watch the full video. Howard Hughes, richest person in the world, film producer to flying and making planes. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. In 1905, Howard Hughes was born in Houston to a very rich family. His father, Howard Hughes Sr., was a well-established entrepreneur and investor of his time who owned a company called the Hughes Tool Company. From his early childhood, Hughes had an unwavering interest in technology and science. As he had an efficient upbringing from her highly educated mother and entrepreneur father, Hughes got all the support he needed as a child. At the age of 11, he ended up innovating the first wireless radio transmitter in the history of Houston. Later on, he became the first licensed ham radio operator in Houston. It is essential to note here that Hughes was the first child to secure this designation in the history of the United States. Thus, as Hughes grew up, his passion for innovation also increased along with his age. At the age of 12, he was featured in an American magazine as the first innovator of a motorized bicycle. In 1921, Hughes attended Fessenden School where he developed a passion for aviation, engineering, and mathematics along with his childhood interest in science and technology. Hughes was a different student. The Times records the headmaster of Fessenden School saying, he would take additional classes of engineering and would undergo extra courses of engineering. In 1922, when Hughes was applying for a graduate degree at Rice University, his mother passed away. Soon after in 1924, his father also died after suffering a series of chronic diseases. This was the turning point in the life of Hughes, as his father was his role model. Following the tragic death of his father, Hughes withdrew his application from Rice University and decided to kick off his professional life. Howard Hughes got the controlling share of Hughes Tool Company, and he used the profits of company to fund new ventures such as Hollywood. Unlike his childhood interests, Hughes opted for a varyingly different early career, Hollywood. In 1928, he got an offer from the then Hollywood creme de la creme, Ralph Graves, to finance his film. Thus, Hughes kicked off his career in Hollywood by producing and financing his first film, Swell Hogan. 
In 1927, Hughes produced and financed another film, Everybody's Acting, followed by the 1928 film, The Arabian Night. This film became widely successful and won the Academy Award for Best Director in the following year. Hughes went on to produce another two super hit films, The Rackets and The Front Page in 1930. Both of the films were financially successful and were nominated for the Academy in the 1930s. Likewise, Hughes also starred in other films like Scarface and The Outlaw. The latter film featured the then popular Hollywood actress Jane Russell. In 1940, Hughes decided to own either partial or whole ownership of RKO companies. By that time, RKO was a giant company that had RKO Pictures, RKO Theaters, RKO Radio Network, RKO Studios, and a number of other giant chains. After partially owning RKO companies for $8.9 million in 1948, Hughes struggled with the management of RKO. In the initial years, the RKO companies lost its year-over-year -year revenue. However, Hughes succeeded in getting the company back on track in 1952. Consequently, the RKO companies retrieved the fame that it had previously throughout the United States. Nevertheless, Hughes owned the entire RKO in 1954 after purchasing it for $24 million. This was the time when Hughes was at the apex of his success as the sole owner of the major Hollywood in the US. During this time, his net worth doubled, his fame increased, and Hughes became one of the leading business tycoons in the United States. While Hughes's net worth was staggering as he owned the RKO companies, he did not stop there. Instead, he switched to real estate to double up his wealth. According to Forbes, the land was one of the essential components of Hughes's wealth. The report suggests that Hughes owned land in cities like Las Vegas and Culver City. He owned 25,000 acres in Las Vegas and roughly 12,000 acres in Culver City. Likewise, he also bought the popular air terminal in North Las Vegas. However, it is essential to note here that Hughes's real estate business functioned under the tree of his giant company, Howard Hughes Corporation. This was a massive company with $72 million in annual revenue that had many companies under it. Hughes Tool Company is the foremost among them. As the chief of Howard Hughes Corporation, Hughes was widely successful in the late 1960s and early 1970s. As we mentioned earlier, Hughes had an unwavering passion from his early childhood. He was proactive about jets and flying during his school days. Similarly, he had also taken courses in professional training from pilots at the age of 20. Thus, as he grew and his business flourished, Hughes did not forget that childhood passion. Hughes sustained his passion for aircraft and flew throughout the world as a pilot. Sustaining his passion for aircraft, Hughes ended up owning his aviation company, Hughes Aircraft. This flight company was operating at the Glendale Airport, California. By that time, it was the most technologically advanced aviation company not only in California but throughout the US. Thus, it goes without saying that Hughes Aircraft was another major company that added up to the growing wealth of Hughes. Apart from owning an aircraft company that was popular throughout the United States, Hughes also custom-designed aircraft for his own aviation. Thus, he gained wide popularity as an aviation enthusiast. Nevertheless, Hughes survived as many as four deadly plane crashes throughout his life. Maintaining his passion for aviation, Hughes also holds the world record for the highest plane speed. He flew his custom-made plane for 566 kilometers per hour over Santa Ana, California. Through Hughes Tool Company, Hughes sold novel and major aircraft throughout the country. Some of the then-popular aircraft that Hughes Tool Company sold include Boeing 307 and Boeing 707. The Hughes Aircraft and the Hughes Tool Company competed with the then-highly popular airlines like Pan American World Airways, American Airlines, and United Airlines. Apart from solely owning giant companies that had billions of dollars in revenue, Hughes was also interested in business partnerships. One of the best partnerships that Hughes had during his business career was in collaboration with David Charney. Charney was the then business tycoon who had many successful and established businesses throughout the company. Thus, the collaboration of Hughes and Charney was another source that doubled the wealth of Hughes. Similarly, this partnership also taught Hughes lots of business lessons and made him acquainted with other business gurus. One of the great deals that Charney and Hughes made was the Air West buyout. 
By then, AirWest was the most contested and controversial portfolio that entrepreneurs were reluctant to invest in. Though this Charney Hughes partnership was initially in loss, it ended up becoming the great profitable deal that Charney and Hughes ever made. As Hughes had gained a staggering wealth and wide popularity, he had a generous heart. Throughout his life, he had many anthropological initiatives that aimed at helping the poor and needy people. Every year, he would dedicate a decent portion of his wealth to charities and donations. According to Forbes, Hughes had pledged half of Hughes was reported to have donated $4 million. His charities and donations revolved around helping underprivileged children in the US and Africa, resolving political issues and sustainability of the planet. Perhaps the most essential anthropological work of Hughes is the foundation of Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Originally launched in 1953 in Miami, this medical institute is currently operating in Chevy Chase, Maryland. In its essence, Howard Hughes Medical Institute is the brainchild of his interest in science. This medical institute is dedicated to biomedical research. The institute hails numerous scientists and researchers every year that have a quest for understanding human biology. Reports suggest that Hughes was struggling with taxes and IRS in the 1950s. To turn his wealth into assets, Hughes decided to turn half of the Hughes aircraft into an anthropological business. So he invested $18 million to found Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The institute was equipped with all the advanced tools for medical research. Today, the institute is still operational and offers a worthwhile opportunity for scientists and medical researchers. Howard Hughes was lucky enough to inherit a multi-billion dollar company, Hughes Tool Company. He was smart enough to use the funds to do what he wanted. He hired Noah Dietrich, who was a brilliant manager, and managed Hughes Tool Company while Hughes can establish his own business empire. As once he said, the tool company was my father's success and it always will be. He used the proceeds to start very successful ventures, which made him the richest and most famous person of the time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.